Now, if you're looking to hold your hand in all the correct position and say the right mantras to meditate, this video is not for you because we are not doing all that. <laughs> mm -mm. Now, for some reason, meditation looks so overwhelming online, but I promise you these tips will help break it down so you don't have to go through any of that. This should not be a stressful process. It should relieve stress. And this is exactly how we're gonna do it. First tip, if you don't know where to start in terms of your meditation, go onto YouTube and type in meditation followed by whatever you're feeling. Meditation for when you're sad. Meditation for when you're happy. <laughs> if you're just like, you know what? I really want that new job or there's something I'm seeking in my life, put meditation for manifestation. There's so much information out there. So my best advice would be to start exactly where you are right now. If you just put on a regular meditation and you're starting out, it might feel overwhelming for you. You might have all these thoughts that you can't tune out. But if you put on a meditation that's very relatable to where you currently are, whatever you're feeling in that moment, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to follow along. Tip number two is that if you've done some of these videos and you wanna get a bit consistent with it, start a series. One of the best things that I've done in terms of meditation is start a 30 day series, start a seven day series. It's a lot easier because you don't have to think about like, what am I gonna put on? You already know you're just gonna follow the sequence. And it also helps whatever topic that you're doing it on just stay fresh in your mind throughout that week or month. You can do a series on happiness, on letting go of anxiety. One of my favorite ones that I've done was a 30 day meditation sequence on the Calm app. That's what I personally used to meditate. And it was so good to not have to think about what to put on because it was right there. It helped me follow along as if it was like a story that I got to listen to every night. This video is not sponsored, although if you want it to be calm, holla at your girl. I know Headspace is really good and a few different ones. If you want some free options, YouTube is the best place. What I would recommend, and I'm so sorry for small channels, I'm not trying to throw shade at you, but small channels that don't monetize aren't able to choose where they put in the ads. And I promise you, there is nothing more frustrating than being in a mid meditation and having an ad pop up. So I would recommend if you're listening to a meditation to listen to it from a bit of a bigger channel to make sure that you will not be interrupted. Number three, this might get a little controversial. Every video that I see, and I know everyone says this when they think of meditation, I think of it too. I'm thinking of like someone who's has their legs crossed, sitting on the floor, they have their hands like this. Like it's very clear the picture that we get in our heads. And let me tell you, as someone who's done at least a thousand sessions, that's what my apps tracked. I very, very rarely meditate like that. My go-to position is lying straight on my bed absolutely having to move no muscle. I'm sure there are many reasons as to why they recommend you sitting up. One of them is just to be more present. But if it's in between you meditating it your way and you not meditating at all, do whatever works best for you. This is your own journey. If you're someone who's gonna fall asleep or if it's around bedtime, probably don't do it. Please though, do not feel like you need to be in a certain position to meditate. You can gradually work up to that level. You can put your hands like this. You can learn about all of that. But if you're just starting out, there's no need to create all these barriers for yourself and make it more confusing than it needs to be. Four is very interesting. Okay, so your body enters a meditative state before your mind does which might sound so weird because you're just like, what do you mean? But if I'm still chatting in my head, then how am I feeling the effects of meditation? And I truly don't know how to explain it, but your body almost feels like it's floating or it just feels extremely relaxed before your mind does. I really hope I'm making sense right now. You're the, whatever you're thinking you're gonna feel in terms of meditation, like that lightness, it usually happens before your mind catches up. Like it's a body experience before it is a mind one. And you would think those two go together, but sometimes they actually don't. One is faster than the other. I don't make the rules, I just follow them. That's just how it is. That's how my experience has been at least. And I don't hear anyone talking about this, but personally, it's what I've experienced. And I hope that provides a little bit of relief for you as well, that even if you're not able to quiet all your thoughts down, you're still able to benefit from this experience. Your body is still feeling it. And I'm not saying it's not gonna happen in every session, but as you keep doing this, you are for sure going to notice it. One thing I say about meditation is that I don't always feel the effects of meditating, but I always feel the effects when I stop meditating, which goes to say that sometimes when I'm meditating consistently, I'm just like, oh yeah, well, I noticed this and I'm just at this certain level of awareness. And then when I stop meditating, all the thoughts come back in and I'm just like, oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay, I see it now. I see why it benefited my life. <laughs> Number five is one of the things that I actually got from one of the series in Calm, which is don't move. Now, for some reason, when we are meditating, it almost seems like there is an itch in our body that we just have to scratch. We're like, mm, 
you know what? My arm is just not comfortable. I just gotta move it a little bit or there's something like you're just, you realize you're not fully comfortable. And especially in the guided meditations where they're like, focus on how your body feels. You're like, it feels like I need to move. And you shouldn't because when you don't move, first of all, what you're experiencing in meditation is what you're experiencing in life, which is you're trying to focus on something in life and all these distractions are popping up. So this right here, it's a test. <laughs> It's a test, we don't wanna fail, we don't wanna fail. <laughs> but when you're meditating and you are not moving, you are able to sink into that feeling. If you're focusing on your breath, on your chest, on your heartbeat, whatever it is, you're able to go deeper into that sensation when you fully surrender to it. And when you move, it breaks that concentration. It might seem like a tiny little thing, but the fact that you even needed to do that tiny little thing means that it's impacting you. It's demanding your attention. And the whole point of meditation is for you to be in control mentally, where you're like, mm, I see that. I see that you wanna do that. It's a no for me. It's a no for me. Like what happens in my house if I am meditating and someone walks in, I am not moving, I am not speaking. You are going to realize that I'm meditating and you're gonna walk off because I need to stay in that concentrated state and not break free from it or else it's so hard to get back in. Number six, this might be one of the weirdest ones in the bunch, but also I think the best. Truly, this is like, this might be my number one tip. So when you meditate, you want to relax your entire body, right? You're feeling me? You want to relax your feet. You want to relax your legs. You want to relax your arms. You want to do your whole body, making sure that you are not tense and that you're just surrendering to this experience. But sometimes we think we're fully relaxed and we're not. In the way that I always catch myself that I'm not fully as relaxed as I think I am is relaxing my tongue. <laughs> this feels a little weird to say, but my tongue is the thing that I realize is tense because there's so many parts of our body, like clearly there's a lot to this being, right? That it's tough to think of relaxing absolutely everything. Something's on high alert that you're not even aware of. And to me, that always happens to be my tongue. To some people, it's their forehead. To other people, it's their cheeks. So meditation is all about finding out what's best for you. But next time you meditate and you're just like, yeah, I'm fully relaxed, think about it. Be like, what about my tongue? And then you're gonna be like, oh. And when I relax my tongue, that's when I know I am fully letting go of every nerve in my body. I am plopping down. I am giving this all I got. <laughs> Number seven, stop getting frustrated with yourself. This isn't about not having any thoughts or breaking free of all of them. And I think a lot of people get hung up on this. Meditation, like many other things in life, we're caring so much about the output. What are we getting from this? Did we accomplish our goal? Instead of just being happy with completing it. That's it. All you want to do is complete the meditation. Tomorrow you can try again and then you just keep on that cycle because it's going to change you. Regardless if you're stopping every thought or not, it's going to impact you, I promise. The best way I've heard it explained is that you go to the gym to get physically strong, you meditate to get mentally strong. So every time you have a thought in meditation and you're like, whoa, I'm having this thought, and then you brush it to the side, it's like you're doing reps, you're working out, you're training yourself to recognize all of these thoughts that are popping up so you can step out of it and then push them away. How can you train if there aren't any weights and these weights in this scenario are your thoughts. So what I'm trying to say is it's part of the journey, it's part of the process, you're not weird, you're literally like everyone else, this is what stops everyone else, so don't let it be you, just continue and be happy that you finish your meditation. That is your only goal. Eight, if you feel yourself drifting, start counting your breaths. One thing that really surprised me when you do meditations where they tell you when to start breathing, when to inhale, exhale, is that usually your exhale should be longer than your inhale, and I'm like, what? because I always wanna inhale longer than I exhale. I don't think I'm the only one, I don't, I don't. So for example, they'll be like, inhale for one, two, three, four, five, and then hold for one, two, three, four, five, and then exhale for eight, and I'm like, eight? I have no more, I have no more breath left in me. Like I'm giving you guys all I got here. So counting your breaths is such a great way for you to truly be present in what you're doing because you start becoming mindful as to how you even breathe. There are many different types of meditation. Some of them guide you on how much to inhale and exhale and that might work great for you. If your meditation does not have that, just do it yourself. Think of how many breaths you're taking in, pausing and then exhaling 
and do that a few times. Don't do it throughout the whole meditation, but just to get you in a certain rhythm and then let it go. All of this helps you throughout the day as well whenever you need to take an extra breather for yourself. Now this has more to do with breath work than meditation, but one type of breath work that is extremely powerful for calming us down is going <sighs> So taking two breaths in and one breath out. So taking two breaths in, almost gasping, holding it and letting it out. And this shocked me because this is exactly what we do when we cry. This means that our body, our nervous system has an internal system where it does a certain breath work to calm itself down. I mean, if you don't think our body is insane after that, I just don't know. But this goes to show the power of breathwork in our own body that we already have these systems in place to help us. So it works. Nine, whenever you have these big emotions or anything specifically is going on, lead into meditation. Sometimes when we're in a rut, we binge watch shows, we do all of these things. And for me personally, I love entertainment but I do not feel like that is a moment of peace for me. I feel like my mind is still working, it's still going. And the only time that I truly feel like I am letting go of everything is through meditation. So one of the tips that I have is that when you're meditating and you're catching yourself being in a rut, think to yourself, this is the only time that I have to actually do nothing and give myself a break. And whenever my mind is going crazy and I think that, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I probably only have like three minutes less in this meditation, like focus. <laughs> because it's the only time I have of peace. There's so many moments in our life where we're feeling overwhelmed or we, we have to make a life decision and we don't know what to do. We, we don't know how, even how we're feeling. We don't know how to decipher what's going on. And these are some of the best moments to lean into meditation because you can just meditate thinking of one question and hopefully by the end you get at least some clarity as to what it is that you wanna do because you're kind of removing the noise. This is such a powerful way to meditate, I feel, because you're trying to truly tune in with your yourself and you're a lot more vulnerable which I think helps you connect with this entire experience a bit more one situation which wasn't a rut but I'm gonna share with you that I went through is that I had lost something I forgot what it is I don't know if it was a passport but it was something significant and I was freaking out. I was like, where did I put this? No way. How did I lose it? You know those moments? That's where I went through. And I was like, I'm just going to meditate about it. I don't know if, if this is going to help me, but I need to calm down because I'm feeling a lot of things. And I meditated and throughout the whole meditation, I was just focused on where can I find this? Where can I find this? Because deep down, I'm the one who put it somewhere. So somewhere here, some part of my brain knows where I put it. And I just need to channel that part. <laughs> and at the end of my meditation, it was almost like, oh, I know exactly where it is. And I went to that spot and I found it. And afterwards, I went on Instagram and I was like, oh my gosh, none of you told me. None of you told me that I could use meditation to find lost items. Are you kidding? I felt like this was a superpower. It was a hidden skill that no one was talking about. And I'm not saying that you're going to find everything that you're looking for through meditation, any lost items. But what I'm saying is that you get to channel different parts of yourself that maybe you don't have access to because blah, 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 the mind is going crazy and that can be so powerful also at the end you're gonna have so much more confidence in the meditation in the whole process and you're gonna feel like a boss you're gonna be like mm, i did that i had a question to that problem and i solved it by myself are you kidding this is a tool that's been here this whole time Oof. It's a good feeling. So many times we think we need to rely on others or like ask on others and sometimes we can rely on ourselves. A lot of times we seek advice from other people but the only one in your specific circumstance is you. You're the only one who knows what's best for yourself and sometimes it's it's a little messy in here. It's hard to channel what you're truly feeling and when you're able to use tools like meditation, journaling, anything that's able to help you tap into that, you get to see what you truly want. And you did it all by yourself and you just feel powerful and it's a great feeling. 10, if you've been liking meditating but you're trying to incorporate it a bit more into your schedule, find out how to pair it with another habit. This can be something you do as soon as you wake up, or possibly when you go to bed. This way, whenever you finish your other habit, you are able to cue this one right in and you're reminded to do it. But it doesn't have to take long. I know a lot of people are like, just do three minutes, just do two minutes. But honestly, I would recommend you start with 10 minutes because when you do five minutes, you're probably gonna do five minutes for a long time until you upgrade because you're gonna get comfortable there. If 10 minutes sounds overwhelming for you, probably, yeah, start at five, start wherever you can. But if you can do 10 minutes, I would highly recommend that so you can actually start feeling 
feeling a bit more effects versus a quick three minute thing and then you forgot that you even did it in the first place. Meditation to me is like the habit that I most love doing. It's the one I'm most consistent with because I don't have to do absolutely anything except shut up. I mean, that's it. <laughs> and a lot of times when you get really into meditation, it's literally like a body and mind high and I'm like, ooh, sign me up for that. So once you start really enjoying the benefits of it, I promise you, you're going to want it more of it in your day. Now, I don't really remember exactly when I started meditation, but I know it has greatly impacted my life. It helps me zoom out of my thoughts. A lot of times in situations, I'm able to see it as the third person and take everyone's feelings into consideration without just being in my own little world. Obviously, I'm not perfect, but I've noticed that I'm able to have more empathy for others through this practice. I'm also able to distinguish a lot of the noise in my head sometimes when it's something that I don't want to identify with anymore, or it's not a pattern that I want to keep repeating. And I think a lot of life, like we talk about all these outer big accomplishment and wins, I think a lot of life is the tiny, tiny, tiny wins. When it, you have like a negative thought pop up and you're like, not today, not today. And that's what meditation helps you with. So if that's something you're looking to practice more in your life, I hope this video helped. My name is Betty. Make sure to subscribe for more self-development videos and I will see you next week.